it is certainly the deal of the day, if not the week, or even longer, perhaps. Chevron is buying Hess. It's an all-stock transaction valued at around $53 billion. Joining us now, first on CNBC, Chevron CEO Mike Worth, and he is joined by Hess's CEO, John Hess. Guys, uh, nice to have you here at Post 9. Thank you. Um, I would typically start with the acquirer asking a question, but John, I really kind of more curious in some ways as to why you've chosen to sell Hess to Chevron. Why now? Why at this price? After obviously a company that's borne your family name for quite some time and has done quite well in the stock market, certainly over the last year. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here. And, uh, you know, this year is the 90th anniversary of our company. Our company started, has a proud history with my father driving a truck uh, during the Depression, a secondhand truck delivering fuel oil in the region. And we've always been guided by making the right long-term decisions for our shareholders. This is the right long-term decision for our shareholders. And at the end of the day, a very compelling one. I think what's important to understand, David, is that Hess brings growth to Chevron, growth in resource, growth in production, growth in cash flow, and Chevron brings us financial strength, financial strength in terms of a strong balance sheet, a diversified portfolio of assets, and industry-leading cash returns. So this strategic combination uh, really builds and creates the premier oil and gas company position for the energy transition. But you talk about long term, and I get that, and I'm sure your shareholders do too, and they will be able to participate given it's an all-stock deal. But my understanding is you guys have known each other for quite some time. You've had at least some conversations years back about this possibility. And I am curious then, John, why now? Yeah, it's a strategic fit. Mike and I have been talking about it for a couple of years, but the pricing never worked. Now the pricing works, and people talk about it. Uh, people have to realize that you know we have the best growth portfolio in the business. And uh, if you look at our stock the last five years, we were the best TSR, total shareholder return, over a five-year period, uh, whether it's major or whether it's independent. And last year, we were up 94 uh, percent, number two in the S&P. So the prices and the exchange ratio converged where it would be on a 20-day basis a 10 percent return, uh, a price that worked for Mike's shareholders but also would uh, work for ours. Remember, we're getting stock back. Understood. So we're but, going to be but it's long pricing term. that you're that, that it just the timing now is correct because in part, as you just said, it's a win-win. It's a win-win and the prices are properly fit. Right. And, but since our shareholders are getting uh, Chevron stock, we get to participate in the upside. Of course. But we also get a higher dividend. Our dividend goes from $1.75 a share to $6 right. a share. And next year, it's going to be six fifty. And yet, we still improve the intrinsic value and growth of Chevron. Mike, I'm wondering, first, I'm sorry, congratulations to both of you. Uh, I'm wondering if we can't go back in time a couple years ago. Oil stocks were hated. There was a belief that whether it be ESG, whether it be lack of growth, that it was finite. There's some terminal value. It's going to be reached by 2030. And yet the world has changed. It turns out that we need oil much more than we realize. It turns out the oil companies are a little bit better citizens. Maybe even turns out the, that the electric vehicle uh, adoption is slower. How many of these uh, determined the idea to really just put a lot more of your company shares toward fossil? Well, look, first of all, we believe the future of energy is lower carbon. And we are committed to helping to build a lower carbon energy system. We've been investing in hydrogen, carbon capture and storage, renewable fuels, and decarbonizing the oil and gas that we use today, reducing the carbon footprint of the, the energy that the world uses today. Uh, the reality is the energy system is massive, and it needs to continue running to keep the lights on, to keep the right. trains running, and keep the toy trucks delivered for Christmas. And, uh, and so, uh, look, we, we need to uh, operate in the world that we live in, and that is one that still needs oil and gas delivered by uh, responsible producers. This is a fantastic, exciting deal for us. It's about long-term growth, it's about long-term value, and a continuing a commitment to a lower carbon energy system. But is oil still cheaper in the ground than on Wall Street because of these concerns? Because when I listen to you, I think to myself, wait a second, maybe all these are buys. Maybe they, congratulations TSR, but the fact is, People gave up on these stocks. This is great business. I think there's still a lot of upside in these stocks. The multiples are still low. Uh, the cash flows are long. The, the duration on our cash flows now is we bring these two companies together. I talked about long-term growth and long-term value. Uh, this extends our visible growth profile into the 2030s. 
Uh, we've got leading shareholder distributions. Our uh, dividend growth has been 6% uh, per year over the last five years, double that of our nearest peer. We announced uh, the intent to grow our raise our dividend at 8% in the first quarter of next year, increase our share buyback to $20 billion a year. We're returning cash to shareholders and still see relatively low multiples compared to the rest of the market. So we think there's a lot of upside. Doesn't sound like regulatory worries are, are top of mind. Can you talk about how close a look that got during negotiations? So you always talk about that during negotiations. Uh, this is an upstream transaction. There's no refining. There's no marketing. Uh, the oil markets are big. We're, we produce 2%. We have a 2% market share in, in the global oil markets. Um, our portfolios have really very little overlap at all. And so we don't believe there are any real uh, competition issues here. We'll certainly work with the authorities to go through the process. Uh, but we see this as good for America. These are two great American companies that are coming together. It's good for energy security, which is on people's mind these days. It's good for the American economy, and uh, we see it as a transaction. Yeah, something else that's be on people's minds, though, as you well know, is trying to reduce the carbon footprint across the board in this in this world as we fight uh, climate change. I mean, how do you respond to those who say, well, all right, it's stock, but you're still going to be buying back a lot of stock to offset what you're, uh, to a certain extent, what you're issuing? You could use your capital more effectively here by continuing to focus on carbon reduction efforts, and you're not doing so. Instead, you're buying a lot of assets that have carbon in the ground. Well, I, I would disagree with that, David. We are focusing on lower carbon energy. I just mentioned we've got the largest production and storage of green hydrogen project in the U.S. that we just invested in. We're the second largest renewable fuels producer, and we're expanding our renewable fuels production capacity. We're working hard to develop carbon capture and storage projects. We're absolutely committed and remain committed to building these lower carbon energy systems, but the world's using the energy that it is today, and we can combine and reduce the, the emissions intensity of the oil and gas that's being used in the world as well. And so we have to do both. Uh, it's not about one or the other. We need to do both of those. Right. And you think by this deal, you will, you will be able to reduce the overall carbon footprint, for example, from production? Sure. We're, we're doing things today to reduce methane emissions, uh, to reduce the, the improve the efficiency of all of the operations. If you look at the carbon intensity of our business today, it's uh, it's down 25 percent from what it was just a few years ago. We've got a commitment to get it down 40 percent by 2028. Hess has been doing a great job of reducing the carbon intensity, the scope one and two emissions of their operations as well. So we're absolutely working on that at the same time as we're working on these new energy systems. John, well, you uh, kind of broke ranks with the historical nature of your company. You, yes, you're keeping the trucks, thank you. But Hess was the gold standard at the gas station. It was the gold standard in refining. How did you know to leave those businesses and just go for pure? Well, you know, we've been on a journey. Uh, it is about change. You never stay with the same hand. And it's always try to invest in the highest returns and the business where you have competitive advantages. So uh, while we started with a truck, then became a refining and marketing company based in New Jersey, we talked about it. Yeah. Uh, then the gas stations. And then ultimately in 69, merged with Amrata to balance E&P and refining and marketing. I became CEO in 95. And in 2010, we started our journey just because an EMP company because we thought the returns would be higher. But Jim, you made a point before about oil and gas. Oil and gas are going to be needed for decades to come. They're key to an affordable, just, and secure energy transition. And in the United States, it's a strategic industry for our country. Uh, 12 million jobs, more than automotive lower uh, energy and electric costs uh, by a factor of two to three versus Europe. And we're energy independent. We're uh, both Europe and China by 70 percent of their energy. So this issue of energy security is key. But people have to have clear eyed thinking. Oil and gas are needed for decades to have an affordable transition.